Hello students. Today we are going to see the performance of the experiment to prepare and submit sulfur ointment. So as the aim is that we have to prepare a sulfur ointment, the requirement for this experiment is we are going to require a water bath, tripod stand, china dish, spatula, glass rod, etc. And in chemicals, we will require wool fat, hard paraffin, yellow soft paraffin, C2 sterile alcohol, water, sulfur, etc. So uh, the semi-solid dosage forms, these are the products of semi-solid consistency and these are to be applied to the skin or the mucous membrane for a therapeutic or protective action or it might be used for cosmetic functioning as well. So uh, these may be either medicated or, or non-medicated. Now medicated means what? It contains some type of, uh, some kind of therapeutic agent and non-medicated means it is bland. Okay, so it, this we are going to use only for its physical effect as protective function or lubricant and emollient property. So these contain, uh, the semi-solids, they contain one or more active ingredients dissolved or uniformly dispersed in a suitable base and any suitable excipient such as emulsifiers, viscosity increasing agents, uh, antimicrobial agents, antioxidants or stabilizing agents, etc. These are added, okay? So pharmaceutical semi-solids, uh, these, uh, these include ointments, creams, pastes, plasters, gels, etc. So now let us see what is an ointment. Uh, the ointment is a very viscous uh, semi-solid preparation and it is used topically on a variety of body surfaces. So the body surface which we, on which we are going to use it, it include skin, the mucous membrane of the eyes, uh, vagina, anus and nose. Uh, since they are of greasy nature, they stain cloths and are generally uh, poor solvent for the, most of the drugs and usually decrease the drug delivery uh, capabilities of the system. So an ointment may or may not be medicated. Uh, typically, it is used as emollient to make the skin more pliable uh, protect, or it can be used as protective barriers or and uh, it is also used as vehicle in which to incorporate the medication. So the medicated ointments, they consist of a drug and a vehicle called as base. So example of the medicated ointment mostly includes ophthalmic ointments, rectal ointments. It is used for the symptomatic relief against anal and uh, perianal uh, pruritus, pain and inflammation, which is associated with hemorrhoids, anal fissures, fistulas and proctitis. For intrarectal use, um, apply the ointment with the help of a special applicator. So now let us see in detail about the ointment bases. So semi-solid bases, they do not only act as the carriers of the medicament, but they also control the extent of absorption of the medicament incorporated into them. So uh, an ointment base should be compatible with skin, stable, smooth, non-irritating, uh, non-sensitizing, inert, capable of absorbing water or other liquid preparations and of releasing the incorporated medicament uh, readily. Okay, uh, so um, a base for ophthalmic semi-solid uh, must be non-irritating to the eye and it should also be sterilizable conveniently. So the ointment bases may be classified in several ways, but there are typically four classes. Uh, the first type is oleogenous base then uh, absorption base, emulsion base, which is water removal base, and water soluble base. So um, uh, we need to very appropriately select the ointment base. So it mostly depends on certain criteria. The first criteria is what is the desired release rate of the uh, drug uh, substance from the ointment? The rate and extent of the topical or percutaneous drug absorption desirability of occlusion of the moisture from the skin, stability of the drug in the ointment base, effect of drug on the consistency of base, easy removal of the base on washing, and characteristic of the surface to which it is it will be applied. So examples are an ointment is usually applied to the dry scaly skin, a cream is applied to weeping or oozing surfaces, and a lotion is to be applied to, to um, intertrigenous areas or where friction may occur uh, in between thighs or under armpits, okay? So now first let us see in detail about the oleogenous or the hydrocarbon base. So this is a purified mixture of liquid, semi-solid or solid hydrocarbons which are made from 
uh, petroleum. The water and aqueous preparations may be incorporated, but in small amount with very difficulty. So most of the early ornament bases used to be exclusively oleaginous in nature, but nowadays the materials obtained from the plant, animal, as well as synthetic origin are employed as oleaginous ornament bases. The combination of these materials, it can produce a wide range of melting points and viscosities. So these bases are immiscible with water. That is, we can say they are difficult to wash off. Uh, they are not absorbed by the skin. They remain on the skin for a long period of time without uh, drying out. They absorb very little water from the formulation or from skin exudates. They inhibit water loss from the skin by forming a waterproof uh, film on it, which act as an occlusive dressing. It also improves the hydration of the skin, and this may encourage the penetration of the medication through the skin. So, example of oleogenous bases includes petrolatum, white petrolatum, white ointment, yellow ointment, uh, and its uses. It acts as protectant, uh, emollient, and it is used for used as vehicle for solid drugs. Now, let us see the next base, which is absorption base, or which is also called as emulsifiable base. So they are called as emulsifiable bases because they initially contain no water, but they are capable of taking it up to uh, to yield W by O or O by W type of emulsions. So the absorption bases they are mostly W by O type of emulsions and have capacity to absorb considerable quantities of water or aqueous solution without marked changes in the consistency. These are less occlusive than the hydrocarbon bases. Incorporation of aqueous solution is possible. Or it is easier to spread. It is good emollient, though not as much as uh, oleaginous uh, a base. They hydrate the stratum corneum. It is difficult to wash off from the skin, mostly W by O. It is used as protective uh, emollient and vehicle for aqueous solution and solid drugs. Now the next type of base is emulsion base, which is also called as water removable bases. They are either O by W or W by O type of emulsions, resembling creams. Example is hydrophilic ointment USP base. Then uh, in cold creams, we are going to use W by O type of emulsion, uh, which act as emollient and it can be also used for cleansing property. It is not water washable, non-occlusive. It has got shiny appearance and uh, you don't need to add glycerin into it. Then the next thing, which next cream, uh, the base, uh, we can use it for vanishing cream. Uh, the vanishing cream is O by W type of emulsion and contain large percentage of water and humectant. So an excess of stearic acid in the formula, uh, when you or, uh, when you see the formula for this basis, excess of the stearic acid it helps to form a thin film when the water evaporates. So uh, this this add-ons to the properties of this water removal removable basis. So the property of emulsion bases it is water washable, it is easy to remove. It is non-greasy. It can be diluted with water or aqueous solutions. It is less or non-occlusive. It is more acceptable for cosmetic reasons. It has a got better compliance. Patients prefer cream to an ointment because the cream spreads more readily. It is less greasy. Uh, evaporating water soothes the skin, the inflamed tissue. The use it uses it can be used as cleansing creams, emollients, and vehicle for solid and liquid drugs. The next type of base is water wash soluble bases, which is greaseless ointment base. So as they do not contain any oleaginous component, they are water soluble and completely water washable. Because they soften uh, with the addition of water, large amount of aqueous solutions are not effectively incorporated into these bases. Uh, the uses it can be used for drug vehicle, the water soluble bases, they have advantages of being water soluble and washable non greasy non staining non or less occlusive mostly used for incorporation of the solid substances it does not support mold growth uh, it undergoes little hydrolysis so we can say it is uh, very stable disadvantages it may dehydrate the skin and hinder the percutaneous absorption so the macrogols or the carbobax wax they are the mixtures of polycondensation products of so ethylene oxide and water and they are described by their average molecular weights so different grades of, of carbovaxes are available, which are designated by a number, which represent their average molecular weight. For example, PG200, PG400, PG1000, PG1540, PG6000, etc. Now we will see how this formulation is first um, formulated 
and then we will see what is the category of the formulation its use labeling condition etc first we will see the formula and the formulation now let us see the performance of uh, the uh, experiment to prepare and submit sulfur ointment so uh, this is the formula for sulfur ointment in that we are going to require sublimed sulfur wool fat hard paraffin wax hard paraffin cytosterol alcohol and white or yellow soft paraffin okay so in this this ingredient this sublimed sulfur it is going to act as scabicide and all this uh, constituents they are the composition to prepare absorbent base okay so what we are going to do this all uh, ingredients they are component of the absorbent base so we are just going to prepare a base and into it we are going to add the sulfur so as this is the drug sublimed sulfur so we can say this scabicide is the category for this ointment right now this total formula if you just see it this formula is given for the preparation of 100 grams of sulfur ointment but we are going to produce only 20 grams of sulfur ointment so now we will have to calculate what amount of each ingredient we will require for 20 grams right now as you can see this is for 100 grams so what we will say sulfur for 100 gram how much we are requiring 10 grams okay we require 10 gram so sulfur for 20 grams how much we will require that we have to calculate so now we will calculate this value of x is equal to x is equal to 20 into 10 divided by 100 right so this will cancel out and we require 2 grams of sulfur in preparation of 20 gram of uh, ointment right so now similarly we will calculate for this we require uh, this requirement is 400 grams so by putting the values we will calculate what amount of wool fat is required what amount of hard paraffin is required what amount of cytosterol alcohol is required and what amount of yellow soft paraffin is required right so we have calculated all the values and now we will proceed with the formulation so now as you can see here we have taken yellow soft paraffin 15 grams okay this is according to calculation yellow soft paraffin we have taken 15 grams this is sulfur sulfur is 2 grams right then uh, here we have taken cytosterol alcohol 1 gram uh, hard paraffin 1 gram and wool fat 1 gram right now the procedure of this practical is first we will mix all this base ingredients uh, into this china dish and we will allow it to uh, get heated on this water bath okay once everything is melted we will take off the melted mass and we are going to put it on this uh, slab okay this is ointment slab right then into uh, one portion of the sulfur powder we are going to mix with three Uh, volume or three units of this um, ointment base, right? So now we will start with the procedure. So this is yellow soft paraffin, and into it we are adding cytosterol alcohol. Then we will be adding hard paraffin, and lastly we are going to add the wool fat. this is very sticky so you can directly uh, take uh, this ingredient into the china dish that that can also be done so that no amount of material will be lost or you have to scrape off everything very carefully okay so now we have taken this wool fat we will remove everything with the help of this glass rod because we are not going to use the spatula for the process okay so now everything is taken off into this we will mix it now we will put it into the hot water bath
वी हैव टू अलाव एवरीथिंग टू बी मेल्टेड See now, as you can see, everything has started to melt. The hard paraffin it takes a little bit more time to get completely melted. We have to heat it until we get a clear solution. Now, as you can see, the paraffin it has also started to melt down. Very small amount of paraffin is remaining now. Okay, as you can see now, everything has been melted. We will switch off the flame. Okay, now you can see this is clear transparent thing. Okay, nothing is remaining in this. Now we will allow it to solidify. Once it is cooled, once it attains the room temperature, it is going to solidify. So now as you can see here everything it has solidified well right now we will on this slab okay on this slab we are going to take one portion of the sulfur and three portion of this ointment piece and we are going to mix it just by using the spatula. So now here we have taken the sieve number 85 right it is it is having a very small uh, pore size or we can say perforations so we will place this sieve on this tile and we will pass the sulfur through this now why do we why do we need to pass this uh, through the sieve to break the lumps which are present in the sulfur powder okay we don't want our ointment to contain the lumps of sulfur and hence we have passed it we are going to pass it through this sieve okay so that we will get a lump free powder see now all of the powder it has passed see the difference in the powder which was earlier and which is it which it is now 
so now we will uh, remove this ointment and we will place it on the slab So now we have taken out all the ointment okay and now into this much amount of base we will be adding very small amount of the sulfur and we will mix it in this way with the help of spatula. Now we will go on adding into it more, more and more amount of uh, ointment and we will take small amount of the sulfur powder. Now to this we are going to add still more amount of the base and we will take small amount of the sulfur powder. You have to mix it carefully and you have to be careful that you don't touch the sulfur directly with your hands okay Now we have mixed all the ointment with sulfur and we are going to mix it carefully. Okay, so now we can say of a sulfur ointment is completely ready okay you can see if you take just small amount of this ointment and apply it onto your skin it got absorbed easily and you do not feel the greetiness of the sulfur that means your ointment is formulated well 
okay there is no greetiness you can observe it there is no greetiness and the ointment is ready now we are going to fill this ointment in a container we are going to fill the ointment in wide mouth container so we have taken this container and now we will add this into the container for now as you can see here we have filled this container uh, with the ointment and you have to be very careful to remove the excess from the top okay just do it like this and put it inside it and you can you can uh, clean this clean the top part the ceiling part okay so that this looks good okay so this is it how you have to pack it and we are going to close this lid and now uh, we will see the labeling so now we have prepared this label so on the top you are going to write the name of the product how much quantity you have prepared and here you have to write the composition you have to write rx rx is the superscription okay that means recite so we are going to write the quantity which we have taken okay so then category of this product is cabicide storage is store in well and dry place manufacturing date is 8 10 2020 expiry will be one year later then you have to write the manufacturing number batch number and direction the direction for this label is you have to uh, the direction for this uh, formulation is apply on affected area as directed by the physician and this thing is very important which we call as label but we do not mention it as label okay so you have to keep in mind label means which is very important and the patient should know okay and hence always whenever you are going to apply the label you have to write those things in dark red color or you have to highlight it so that the uh, it will catch the eyes of the patient immediately as he is going to hold the bottle the label is it is to be used only for uh, external purpose and don't apply on broken skin right so we have prepared this label and now we will stick it on the container so now we have highlighted the label which is very important in red color now we will stick it so now as you can see we have labeled the container container okay when you are going to apply the label on the container at that time you have to keep in mind that small amount of space should be left on this on the bottom part and on the top part right and the label also there should be enough space here so that the formulation is visible externally okay it should not cover the whole area okay so there should be some space so that the formulation is visible so this is the formulation of sulfur ointment so now uh, the category of this product is it is used as cabicide the storage condition is you have to store it in cool and dry place direction is you have to apply it on affected areas directed by the physician the labeling condition is very important and it is for external use only don't apply on the break, broken skin so the label which we will prepare for this formulation is like this first you'll write the name ointment sulfur ointment and how much you have prepared then the quantities then category storage manufacturing date expiry date license number batch number direction and label you don't have to write label as it is but you have to uh, write it in bold and that too in colorful form uh, mostly you have to go for using the red color as i have shown you in the uh, actual experiment uh, 
uh, because it has to be eye catching and the person he will immediately see the label okay so observation in observation we can write the appearance of this product is smooth uh, it is yellow in color and it is a very soft cream paste okay the result is 20 mg uh, 20 grams of sulfur ointment was prepared and submitted the very commonly asked question related to this practical is first you will be either asked to define the ointment then you will have to describe the basis of the ointment which we have already done then you will be asked what is the category of the sulfur ointment what is the labeling condition for sulfur ointment and how do you apply it on the skin okay so this was all about the preparation and submission of sulfur ointment thank you for watching